Hello my loves and a very warm welcome back to the library which is open so I hope you brought your library card my dears how are we all doing um, I'm coming to you on a Sunday evening actually well it won't be Sunday evening when you see this but you get the idea because I thought you know what we've not done a Stuart and his PJs uh, video for a while so why don't we bring that back and, and see how that goes down in this fabulous story that we're all calling 2021 I hope you're doing well. Uh, just a little apology to start with, really, to kind of follow up from my last video. I'm sorry that my upload schedule's been a little bit spasmodic um, of late. Um, not intentional by any by any stretch of the imagination. It's just, I don't know about you, I'm just um, I'm finding life itself just a right challenge. That'll be no, no, um, no news to anybody, I'm sure. I'm just having a cup of tea. Um... And, and, you know, it's just trying to balance all the, like, disparate elements of life right now and, and your own kind of mental and emotional health is, um, it's, a, it's a real challenge. So, you know, sometimes, you know, I've let certain things slip, maybe. Um, so I do apologise for that, but I'm here now. I'm here now. Um, unfortunately, this is not... Mm, oh, lovely. Banana bread chai, if you're interested beautiful um remember in the first lockdown when everyone was making banana bread what happened to that in fact no that's just going to jinx it and everyone will start doing that again uh forget i said anything um yeah this is not going to be a wrap-up of um the ace life which was the massive chunkster i told you i was reading um last time because i still haven't finished it <laughs> this is week three now <coughs> which is fine we don't have to read at a particular pace or anything but i'm about 600 pages in and it's I think it's just over 900 so but that will be the next video I will I will come to that I promise because I know a lot of people expressed interest and all were reading it at the same time which is interesting no I thought uh, what can I do and I got inspired because I'm actually doing a work project at the moment that's themed around uh, the city of Manchester I won't say too much because it's um it's not sort of out there or whatever and I started to think huh because I'm sort of looking for texts that deal explicitly with Manchester, um, historical and contemporary. And um, I thought, I wonder how many books I've actually read about Manchester, like as my sort of hometown or home city, whatever. And I thought, huh, I should go through that and, 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 and you know, just have a look at that. Because it's not something I necessarily always consider. Um, but then again, now that I come to think of it, maybe I... Just, thanks, thanks for that little sound effect. Um, but then I come to think of it, I probably do consider that because there are um, I do have preferred geographical locations um, for what I like to read. For instance, I enjoy a cosy mystery in the countryside, the Cotswolds, or I enjoy it in like the southern states of uh, of the USA. So you know, maybe there's something there. Um, so I decided to go through my books, and and I've chosen just a couple um, of basically my my home city reads. So I'd like to share them with you, if I may. Uh, so first up is a kind of a classic, really, which I reread for the first... No, you can't reread for the first time, can you? I suppose you can. And this is uh, Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell, quite famous. Um, was adapted into a play by the Royal Exchange Theatre, which is also in Manchester, a few years ago. Rather successfully, I believe, by Rona Munro. And this is kind of subtitled A Tale of Manchester Life. And this deals... Um, very much with the you know the kind of the chaos brought by the industrial revolution in manchester so it deals with poverty and social class concerns our eponymous heroine mary barton who is loved from afar by the lovely gem um but then he gets accused of murder of this guy that she's sort of been stepping out with sort of not really and then she has to sort of clear his name but complications arise and it's very sort of typical of a novel of the period because uh, it was published in 1848 and it's very much didactic in the sense that um it has a real point there to um to say about um the experiences of working class people and you know the sort of the miss the the the, the imbalance of the class system and you know factory owners factory workers it deals with strikes and so on and so forth so stuff is very pertinent 
And there's something lovely about reading about the places that we recognise today, back then. So I really, really enjoyed this. It's not an easy read by any by any stretch, but then, you know, I think we have to like when we go back to classics, we have to kind of look, don't we, at like what the fashions or the particular uh, nuances of writers were at the time because they're not necessarily the same now because we consume culture so differently now. But uh, so yeah, that's my first one, Marais Bartol. And um, to stick with the historical, this one I just love, and I'd seen this in um, Waterstones for years, or bought it a while ago, because obviously Waterstones not been open for a while. And this is uh, The Manchester Man. I'll show you that. And this is a, um, it's it basically, it's, it's similar in some respects. It's a sort of rags to riches, not really kind of tale of this young guy called uh, Jabez Clegg in, um, who he's an orphan and he ends up at Ch Chet's, which is now the music college. And it's sort of about his life. Uh, it's very much a morality tale, very 18th century, as I say, in a similar way to the way that Mary Barton is. But what I really love about this is that it's um, it, it has like characters and things in them that I know as Mancunian pop culture and iconography and iconography, sorry. So stuff like um, Jabez Clegg is the name of a club, uh, as is Joshua Brooks, who's another name of the character here. And one of the quotes from the novel actually appears on um, Tony Wilson's tombstone, I believe. Um, so, you know, for that alone, it's lovely. And I always thought they were real people, but it not. It is, it is indeed a fictionalised um, account. So I really enjoyed this. Again, slow. Slow moving, but that's, that's all right. Sometimes life is too fast and we should slow down. So... <laughs> Um, moving to the slightly more contemporary, I picked this up on a whim a few months ago. I say a few months, that could be any time in the last year. Uh, the Private Joys of Nina Maloney, which is a contemporary novel, and it's about the sort of intersection of two cultures, the, the sort of English and the Nigerian culture, and um, it's about, it's a sort of coming-of-age tale about Nina Maloney, who lives in Manchester with her mom Joni, who is white, and obviously her dad was black. Um, and it sort of goes back in time to Joni and, and the father's relationship and N Nina on the cusp of, of becoming, as it were, but it really sort of evokes the spirit of contemporary Manchester in all its beautiful uh, diversity. I don't just mean diversity in that weird tick box way that people do as if that's adequate as representation. I mean, it's diversity in the sense of its voices and its opinions and its feelings and also its contemporary locations as well. It's really, really readable, but also really, really tender. And if you're looking for a sort of coming of age novel with like a strong sense of geography, but also um, um, the concept of geographical identity, then this is a really good show. Uh, next up we have this, which is non-fiction. This is um, Music, Manchester and More, a memoir. Sonic Youth Slept on My Floor by Dave Haslam, who um, also got a mark on the back of that book there, which is a kind of... Um, memoir of the the music scene the popular culture scene um in manchester taking in you know the hacienda um the the queer scene the the emerging local band zion culture so on and so forth by dave haslam who if i'm not mistaken wrote for yeah yeah enemy and also wrote i believe uh, manchester england which is a biography of the city and this is packed full of anecdotes about you know, some of the biggest movers and shakers in, like, pop music history and so on and so forth, the dance scene. Um, and it's just a really fascinating look at how a culture or a subculture was created um, that was, may not have started off in Manchester, but was intrinsically linked to the Manchester sound. You know, you get a lot of sort of, it's not salacious in any way, necessarily, although there is some tea in there, but um, it's just a really... A really good look at how a city copes with changing norms and societal stuff. You know, you know what I mean. How like the city stays stead steadfast through the changing, the changing prisms. I don't know where some of these sentences are going. I'm really sorry. Uh, through the changing prism of life. So there we go. Um, sticking with memoir. Uh, this is Sweet Mandarin. 
um, which is actually named after the restaurant that I believe is still open in the Northern Quarter. And uh, this is a memoir about um, Helen C, um, her grandma, um, Lily Kwok, um, and sort of her experiences growing up in China and how she came to move to Manchester. So this was um, in the 50s and it's it's sort of roughly split between um, China and the UK and it sort of chronicles her life and then subsequently her daughter and granddaughter's lives as they, you know, sort of struggle with what that identity shift is between being from one place and then having first generation or second generation children and then th and then first generation grandchildren and so on and so forth. And um, it, it's lovely. It's about restaurants, which is what her grandmother ends up owning. It was a chippy in Middleton, which is in North Manchester. And the uh, the grand the grandchildren have the restaurant now. And if I'm lying, I do apologise, but I believe it is still open. And it's called Sweet Mandarin. It's about food and family and culture and location and and how that translates or if it translates. But it's also about the secrets that our families have that are not necessarily bad secrets or good secrets. They're just, you know, hidden lives that we don't we don't know exist because oftentimes we our conception of the world is based with ourselves as protagonist you know um not in an, a sort of um selfish way but just because that's how we tend to view things um but this is lovely and as a bonus it was also turned into a play uh, called mountains the dreams of lily quack um which was um also um I was shortlisted for the Bruntwood Prize and produced at the Finbrith Theatre. So, both very good. Both different interpretations of the same story, though, which is very interesting if you're a student of, either literal student or just a general student, of how things are structured for different formats. And finally, a final non-fiction. Um, this comes from another project I was working on. I was working on a, a play called Scuttlers by Ronan Munro. And this was some of the research, the gangs of Manchester. So this is about youth culture in the sort of late uh, 18th century in, in Manchester. And the, the sort of precursor to the youth gangs as we know them today. They were petty criminals. Um, you know, they were very much, um, uh, their identities were very much mired in their locations. You know, it's it's all true. It's uh, It's about sort of, the slums of Angel Meadow, which was like the most notorious slum in, in Manchester, if not the country, and how a culture sprung up there based around like criminal activity, essentially, and petty theft, fighting and turf wars and stuff. But it's it really gives you an insight into the, the sort of Victorian underworld and how the places that are quite affluent now actually started off as, you know, very, very poverty stricken slums and how the youth of that time um <clears throat> sort of dealt with that and and it, it's you know it's it's quite interesting to note that you know things that we think of as quite common youth culture pop culture so on and so forth have always been the same in various forms uh, it's just really really fascinating book so there we go that's my sort of mancunian rundown that's how we read the mancunian way and i picked six here's for why not just a random number but because if you've ever been to affleck's palace which is in manchester one of the tablets outside, or one of the famous t-shirt designs that first came from there says, and on the sixth day God created Manchester. You know, it's a proud city, uh, rightly so, I believe, and a city of uh, radical ideas and politics and culture. So, there we go, that's that's what I've been uh, been thinking about book-wise. Um, what are, what are some books from your hometown? Is that important to you, uh, where books are set? Um, do you actively seek out things that are based in or written by people from where you're from? Um, I think that's quite an interesting question. Does that speak to your cultural identity or are you not too bothered? Sound off in the comments below. And But for now, I'm afraid the library is once again closed, so put your library card somewhere safe. And um, I'm going to enjoy the rest of my uh, banana bread chai and uh, watch some other YouTubers. All the details will be in the description as always, and uh, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't. Until next time, my darlings, I'll see you soon. Keep sniffing the books, and be, be safe, be right safe. Mwah.